I have done a lot of readings by now. Possibly not a hundred, but I'm thinking more along the lines of five? No, 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 I'm just kidding. I've definitely done more than five. Um, but as a matter of fact, when I'm thinking about doing these readings, I, I think of the mistakes that I do as a reader. As an athlete watches their own film after a game, I watch my own readings after they're filmed so I can see what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. And thus far, I've come up with about 10 different mistakes that you can make while you are performing. Projection. This is the time where you need to strike that perfect balance of how far your voice is actually traveling. Um, if there is no mic, be conscious of the room. If it's a small room um, and you're being boisterous, you might be too overpowering. Um, if it's a bigger room and you don't have a mic and you're speaking like a church mouse, your voice isn't going to travel. That is a situation where you would need to strike a balance and uh, you could just practice by getting there before the venue actually opens and starts and you can kind of test out what's good. If you have a mic, there's a couple of different things that you need to take into consideration. Standing in front of a mic, I see that the perfect balance is about having like about five to six inches distance from the microphone to your lips. This way your voice travels clearly enough without being too muffled as if you're doing like a, a two or a three inch. You start getting a lot of different whispers. You could hear your T's. You could hear the of your saliva and it sounds a little muffled and it sounds a little cracked. If you're about 8 to 10 inches away, you're going to start picking up a bit of an echo. Sometimes that might work if you're looking for that certain ambiance, but if you're doing a whole entire poem that way, it might just feel a little too distant and you might pull people out. Another thing that I'll mention is that if you're a person that takes a mic and walks around, if your mic is too close to the speaker while walking around, it's going to start picking up feedback and it just makes for a really startling part of a performance. On the conversation of mics, you still have to be speaking clearly, so make sure that everyone can actually hear what you are saying. Um, if you're an audience member that kind of feels like things are drawn out a little too long, or if you don't like when people talk in a monotone kind of voice, you gotta throw that out the window when you're on stage. Because people actually have to hear everything that you are saying. So if you could say a poem within the three minutes, do so. Eat the clock. Don't turn that three minute poem into a poem that's a minute and 20 seconds and speed through it because what happens when you're speeding through, you're missing the metaphor, you're missing the imagery, you're mixing the different tropes that could come in and you're not giving time for that silence. For that time for an audience to think about what you are saying. Three, as I mentioned in Three, as I said within two, make sure that you're not monotone. Give the reading some pizzazz. Um, sometimes talk low and be a little more morbid or a little more high and mighty. And then all of a sudden turn around and be a little more boisterous with your turns, with what you are saying and what you are doing. You could even put a little more growliness in your voice. You can have fun while you're on stage. Just walk around and have a good time. And whatever you do, if you don't need to laugh, don't laugh. Number four, mic problems and technology errors. Like I mentioned with the mic, well, first of all, when you go on stage, Everyone has a different size. Adjust your mic. Uh, it's really funny and I still make these mistakes. I never, I do everything else right for the most part. I always forget to do this when I get on stage and it's adjust the mic. So um, it's usually the mics that are kind of like, and the, these are the only two objects I have next to me, a uh, maraca and a pencil. So you grab, the mic is usually like this. Sometimes it's really low and I don't bring the mic up and I just adjust this. So what ends up happening is that I'm hunched over and I'm talking into the mic like it's a baby, right? You don't want to do that. Make sure the mic isn't your kid. Make sure the mic is at your level, okay? So bring the mic up, adjust it appropriately, and make sure you keep that three to four inch distance uh, so you can have a better time reading. In the same conversation with microphones and technology, if you are a phone poet, if you are a tablet poet, you do not know how funny and how painful it is when you're in the audience and there's a person on stage reading from a tablet 
and they're using their Google Drive and all of a sudden there's no signal. If they have a screen that turns off after five or 10 seconds, that has happened to me on occasion before and I've had to actually make up what I was going to say next. Um, which is also something that you can think about improv while you're on stage. If you're really into a piece, uh, you can kind of put your own love and your own flair into it by adding a couple of pieces. Try to have your settings so it doesn't turn off after five or 10 seconds. I would usually reset it for about a minute. By the minute, I usually get through the whole entire poem or I can at least scroll a little more. And um, make sure that you guys have the Wi-Fi connection hooked up or download that poem and save it as a document so you can look at it as a document instead of having it, and instead of like relying on the internet. Number five is the paper shakers. The people that do this when they go on stage. Uh, it might be a good idea to have a notebook or to have a tablet, or even I've seen some people have thicker folders when they go up on stage. Uh, sometimes you can't help the jitters when you go up there. And if you're reading your poem, sometimes the people in the first couple of rows can kind of see the shaking a little bit. And sometimes the audience starts paying attention to the shaking more than the reading. Um, and and sometimes people try to help it out by opening up. Uh, this usually kind of clears up some of the dead space. Instead of having the two hands that are kind of rocky, if you, if you feel like you're a paper shaker, just try to use the one hand. Try to do something else with the other hand. Um, no matter how kooky or weird it's going to look, even if it doesn't match anything that has to do with the poem, you're going to look like you're performing and it's going to work in your favor. And it also gets that negative energy out that you're trying to get rid of. Number six is going over your time. If you're on an open mic or if you're having a feature, they usually say how much time you have for open mics is usually three to five minutes. For a feature, you get anywhere from maybe like eight to 12, sometimes 15 minutes, I've even seen 20 minutes. Never go over your time because if you go over your time, you're actually going into someone else's time. Um, and if you want to be invited back for another feature, if you want to be a regular at these open mics, um, the hosts start understanding Understanding that you're someone that doesn't have a time awareness and they might actually pull you aside and give you a, a talking to or I've seen on the open mic scene sometimes you kind of get shuffled to the last part of the set even if you sign up a little earlier because of the time constraint. So make sure that if you have a three minute set at an open mic rehearse your poem and make sure you count uh, you count the poems and make sure you stay in that three minute set. Uh, recite it out loud. What I usually do, I just grab my iPhone and put a timer on and I just see how long a poem takes and I just keep adding up until I get the time. If you have two poems though and they're about four and a half minutes and you only have three minutes, cutting is okay. Just leave some of the other parts. Sometimes I even blend some poems into other poems and I just create like a hybrid of a piece. Number seven isn't something that I have to deal with, but something that I've heard on the scene, and it's misreading your audience. Um, if you're doing a reading for a sixth grade class, and you go in and you start talking about subjects of sex and gender and profanity is in your set list, it's probably not going to go over well with these 12, 13, 11 year olds. Make sure you plan accordingly, depending on where you're going. Number eight, make us buy what you're selling. If this is the first time you're ever reading this poem or showing it to an audience, sell it. Sell that poem because that is your first time you're going out there and you're talking about it. You might not even know how it's supposed to sound, but just go up there with confidence and own that piece because it's something that you created. A lot of the times I go up on stage and I start reading a piece and I realize that it sounds different than I thought it did while I was writing it. And those are those usual aha moments. That's why reading out loud is so important. Number nine, make sure you're also pacing yourself. Like I said earlier, don't go too slow or don't go too fast because that is going to influence the way uh, you look on stage in terms of like performance, uh, in terms of being articulate and being clear. And um, you know, you, you could tell if, if there is a moment, that aha moment that is missed because you didn't take that break. Number 10, the same way you stay at home and edit your work is the same way that you have to edit while you're on stage. Not while you're on stage though, but just think about how the performance went and in hindsight, think about how your performances can be better. How can you always be trying to 
um, embellish that persona? How, what could you do better? How can you say things more clearly? How can you get your things across more? How can you change the way the tone is and connect with the audience on a different level? Edit, edit, edit. That is the most important thing while writing. Writers like writing, but what writers are good at is editing. That's what separates the people that are good at writing and are really, really good at writing. So I hope this wasn't too long. I hope that you all can take this and go up on stage with confidence and kill that poem. Uh, I would love to see some of your poetry if you guys are doing any open mics or features at all. Um, send me a link. Uh, you could message me down below. Or what we could do if you want, take down my email right now. It's Dimitri Reyes Poet at gmail.com. If you guys ever want to send me anything in terms of like performances, you can do that too. Um, you can hook up with me on Facebook and you can hook up with me on Instagram um, at Dimitri Reyes, at Dimitri Reyes on both different platforms. I love that you all are commenting. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. I want to get to know you so I can see you in my next class. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and my van. It looks like we're ready for the third installment of my Life as a Poet.